The year was 1984, and my mother, Kate Bell, lived in Grahamstown, South Africa. While my mother was born and raised in Grahamstown, she moved around a lot as a kid. And I mean a lot. Colorado, London, Durban, and eventually back to Grahamstown. As such, my mom had grown up around European and American pop culture. And in 1984, the one name in Western pop music that couldn't be ignored was Michael Jackson. 1984 was the height of his career. Thriller had released two years prior, and he was touring with the Jackson 5 on their reunion victory tour. So MJ was a pretty big deal at this point in time. He had even been crowned the King of Pop, a title he still holds to this day, nine years after his death. Now my mother loved Michael Jackson, and as kids do when they love something, they get the biggest poster they can and put it front and center in their room, a shrine of sorts to the pop idols of our youth. My mom was no exception. She had a life-sized, six-foot poster of the King of Pop that was so proudly displayed on her walls that the poster could be clearly seen from the pavement outside her house. Now, as ordinary middle-class white South African families tend to do over the December Christmas holidays, my grandparents took my mom and aunt to Durban. As was customary at the time, my grandparents called the local Grahamstown Police Department so that the police could keep an eye on the house. One fateful day, while the police were doing their drive-by to make sure everything in the house was in order, they see a figure lurking in the darkness of my mother's room. Now, I can imagine that due to low light and distance, details of this figure were hazy. But one thing was for certain. This trespasser was black. Being the heroes they were, they leapt into action. These brave souls knew that they were the only ones that could protect this house. Assessing the potential danger of the situation, they decided that the safest course of action would be to shoot first and ask questions later. There was clearly no obvious reason for this man to be in this house, so in their eyes, he had to die. When the dust settled and the police decided that this deviant couldn't possibly be a threat anymore, they approached the crime scene. But where they expected to see pools of blood were only shredded pieces of paper on the floor next to a six-foot life-size poster of the King of Pop with neat little holes punched through his chest. Besides paying for damages, these policemen got off free. They didn't lose their jobs, and even if someone was in the house and someone had been killed, they wouldn't have felt any repercussions. Racial profiling and police brutality are still strong in our society, and they can affect almost anyone, including a six-foot, life-size Michael Jackson poster living in apartheid.